Recently, I was approached by one of my forensics contacts asking me what's the best way to obscure someone's face in a video. They needed to protect someone, their identity in the video, so all they had was Photoshop. Now, normally, an application like After Effects, you can do this kind of work very easily, track someone's face. But if you have just Photoshop, CS5 extended, it's still really easy to do. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here we are in Photoshop CS5 Extended. Remember, that's the version that allows you to go to the File menu, choose Open, and open a video. Here's the video that we staged. This is our little uh, surveillance video. And if you go to the Window menu and choose Animation, it brings up the animation timeline. And as I scrub through this, you can see there is our video. The gentleman that just walked into the screen that's standing in the middle, that's the person we need to obscure his face. He's playing the part of the undercover officer. So if we look here on the right-hand side, we've imported our video into our layers. I'm going to double click and just name this video so it's obvious. And then I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to drag this down to the little Make New um, Item icon, or you could press Command-J on the Mac, Control-J on Windows. Double click, and I'm going to call this Blur, just so we know what is going on. Before I add a filter to this video, I need to right-click and choose Convert to Smart Object. If you don't do this, then any of the effects like mosaic or blur that are applied to that video will only be, only be applied to one frame. Convert it to a smart object, and that filter is now applied to everything. Convert to smart object. So now I have two videos. When I turn them on and off, you can see they're identical. The other thing that's important is that you don't trim this video before you make the smart object. If you trim the head and tail of this video and then make it a smart object, the smart object reverts to the full duration. I'm just leaving this full video as I've imported it. Okay. Next up is to take this video layer, the blur layer, and go to the filter menu and pixelate. We're going to choose mosaic, and that's pretty typical of what people think of uh, when they're uh, creating an obscured video, and I can change the cell size inside here. I've just got it set to 16. Click OK, and now it's occurring to the full video. If I turn the eyeball off, you can see there's our original video in the bottom, and there's our new pixelated video on the top. Your first thought might be to go over here to the uh, mask, and this mask was added automatically for Mosaic and designate an area inside here. The problem with doing that is it won't animate. We need to create a mask, and we need to animate the position of that mask. That only occurs when we add a layer mask. There's two kinds of layer masks. There's no right or wrong. It can either be a raster layer mask, that's one made of pixels, or vector, one made up of a shape. I think it's easier to use a vector because I'll show you why. Okay. Here's our blur layer. We need to add a mask to this, so we can simply go to the mask panel, and you can see there's our button for a raster mask, and here is a vector mask. They also call that a pixel mask. So when I click on it, nothing happens. I'm going to go over to the left-hand side, over to my shapes, and I'm going to grab my circle. Now I'll drag around an area about the size that I think his head is, right there. Okay, that's the first step. If I play the video, then you'll see it obscures part of that video only in the area. I need to start adding keyframes and move that mask. Okay? Pretty easy. Let's look over here on the bottom left. The names are exactly the same as the layers. If I twirl the blur layer down and just drag this up a bit, you'll see that I already have the ability to add keyframes for position, opacity, style, which could be things like glow, bevel, and emboss, vector mask position, ah, that's what we want, or vector mask enable, turning it on or off. Well, we want to make sure it's always on. We just want to make sure that we're uh, animating this. Okay, so we're getting set up. The next important thing is to choose the right arrow. I know sometimes we've got a lot of arrows to choose from. Let me show you the correct one. It's right above the shape. So we were in our shapes over here in the tool panel. That's the correct arrow. It's the black one, the path selection tool, not the direct select tool, and not the move tool up at the top. Please be careful. If you use the move tool, you're not going to move the mask. You'll move the whole layer around. 
and you might reveal something you don't want to. So make sure you're not moving the two layers. All right. So let's roll this video back and find the place where he enters the screen by the no parking sign. There he is. Now watch, I'll grab that black arrow. I'll carefully click on the outside edge of that and you see I get four corners that show up. Now I can drag this back over top. Now we've got our blur. I need to set a vector mask keyframe. Down to the bottom, click, there's our keyframe. I need to add more keyframes because it's not going to follow him along. So I'll move the video ahead a bit, drag this over top. And Photoshop is going to move that from one to the other. It's easy to, to think you're doing something wrong because that shape is not updating. The area isn't, but the mask will not update while you're dragging with the mouse. Don't worry about that. Just keep paying attention to where you need to move this area of obscuration. There we go. Keep going. Drag it over there. I think you get the idea. I'll do a few more and show you the final results. So I took the time to finish up adding all the rest of the keyframes to make sure I'm tracking that vector mask around. Let's look at the final results. So the other things you need to remember um, is over here on the right hand side, we've got our vector mask. And when I click on the vector mask, not the smart filter mask, but the vector mask, you'll notice that I have a feather command in here. So if we drag this in in a little bit, instead of having a hard edge, I could actually feather that edge a little bit. And because this is a smart filter, I can go to the filter menu and choose a different filter. In fact, we don't have to obscure anything in here. This could actually be highlighting something or adding interest to that particular part of the video. Instead of obscuring it, it's brightening it or sharpening it. Um, we're going to just run a quick Gaussian blur on here. Let's do a 10 pixel blur and click OK. And now when I turn off mosaic and Let's just go back a little bit. You just see a different effect. So instead of mosaic, we've got a blur on there. So anything in the filter menu is um, up for grabs when you've got a moving mask on that object. Okay, what we have is a Photoshop file, which is a PSD, and a movie file. You don't have the movie in the Photoshop file. It looks like it, but it's actually linked to it. When you're archiving this, you need to make sure that you're archiving both the original movie and the Photoshop file. Okay, now we need to export this because it's critical that we send something that people cannot reveal the original identity of that person. So we can't send them the PSD, the Photoshop file. So instead, we'll render this out by going to the file menu, export, render video. At this point, we can choose any of the codecs uh, that we have, QuickTime, AVI, or H.264, MPEG, and then we export this out, and that's what you give someone to make sure that the, the output is obscured and no one is going to be able to reconstitute that face or reanimate it or bring it back to life. It's gone for sure. It's stamped and done. That's a really easy way to take in any video, isolate an area, and add as many filters as you want in Photoshop CS5 Extended. Thank you.